Thank you so much for watching Morning Live. Now let's get to this story. Members of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Justice say that the public has a right to be impatient about the slow pace and the lack of progress in the prosecutions by the National Prosecuting Authority. Three years after the National Director and Advocate Shamila Batoy took over, um, it's been pointing out the lack of detail in the reasons that Batoy provided regarding the departure of the head of the Independent Director advocate Hermione Cronier. Um, members also wanted to know to what extent did interpersonal relations between Batoy and Cronier contribute to the resignation of the latter. Now, the committee also referred to a lack of results despite an expenditure of 400 million rand uh, to consultants and uh, this was reported in the NPA's annual report. Justice Committee member Budile Gyanki joins us now virtually to have a further discussion on these matters. Mr. Yankee, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sakina, and good morning to Morning Live followers. So it was a very interesting one to watch yesterday. And after Monday's uh, briefing to the media, I guess many who watched yesterday's proceedings um, wanted to see whether we'd be any wiser regarding some of the reasons and questions that needed detailed answers. But let me start by asking you, um, Ms. Batoy says that the NPA is not in crisis. This is, of course, the statement that she repeated. What is your view as a committee about what is happening in the NPA, how they have progressed under Ms. Batoy or Advocate Batoy, should I say, and um, what you heard yesterday? Is there, isn't there a crisis? Well, thank you, Sakina. Maybe in answering that question, whether there is a crisis, uh, it's, it's important as we did yesterday. Firstly, to make the point that uh, the NPA was one of those hollowed out institutions uh, during the state, state, capture, state capture years. So the, the arrival of uh, Advocate Shamela Batoy would have signaled, uh, in our view, a, a, a pause on the bleeding of that institution. And, and I'm saying a pause because it didn't mean that things would have stopped. So it, it helped in that regard. And, 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 and what you have now is an institution in the recovery mode. But to, to, she, 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 she indicated to us yesterday that there is no crisis in the NPA. Here it is, uh, 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 Sakina. The NPA is challenged in three fronts. It has leadership. Uh, challenges and instability. You have so much acting uh, in that institution across provinces and, and regions. There's, there, are, there are problems of salaries, uh, dis, I mean, kind of discrepancies, where your senior supervisors get less than the subordinate who report to them um, at about 21,000 a difference. There's a, there's a low staff morale that you have in the NPA. That's on record, that's undisputed. You also have got issues of capacity and, and lack of skills as a result of these years of uh, state capture. Uh, but thirdly, which showed itself in some of the issues that we're dealing with yesterday, whether it's the TRC and so on, they have problems of operational efficiency, just this attention to detail to have things kind of uh, happening. So with that, it's fine for Sham, um, Advocate Shamila Bardot to say there's no crisis. But what I've just described to you, I'm describing to you a, an organization with lots of problems. So you, you, you can continue denying that there's no crisis. Maybe you don't like the word crisis. But from an oversight body, uh, as, as the Portfolio Committee on Justice, uh, three years into that position, we are very clear that the NPA is not where it should be. And, and, and I think she needs more assistance than the kind of closing uh, the, the ranks on whether there's crisis or no crisis.
Mm. And then, of course, uh, we saw members of the committee asking the NDPP uh, to what extent interpersonal relations between her and advocate uh, Kunir uh, uh, actually uh, contributed to uh, the latter leaving, uh, deciding to resign from the organization. And I think uh, some people were actually saying, if it wasn't yourself, one of the other members who actually asked whether... Ms. Krenia shouldn't be part of uh, this particular session, given that even though she may have resigned, she is still in the employ of the NPA. Were you satisfied with the answer? Yes, yes, Akina, you're right. We would have asked that question because she remains until she leaves at the end of March, a staff of the NPA. And, and uh, I would have insisted that uh, she needed to be in that presentation because she has not walked away. She's still there. She, and we, we accept that uh, she is not uh, putting forward to us the kind of detailed, um, whether they are sensitive or private uh, kind of uh, personal reasons for, for leaving. You got a sense that uh, that door was closed and uh, they did not want to open it. But we, we certainly went beyond that to say, um, in our view, we think that uh, these institutions, crit as critical as they are, must hold beyond uh, it, it individuals. We must move away from this uh, uh, culture of uh, uh, cult-centered institutions um, because our focus is that we want to build a very strong NPA that attends to this ever-increasing level of organized crime. You would have read in the, in the weekend uh, an article about during this COVID, organized crime is on the increase in, in the continent and more so in our country. And they, they deal with certain categories there. One of those serious categories is what they call embedded individuals within the state. And NPA is supposed to, to assist in playing that kind of role. So we, we accept that she, she, she's not uh, giving us more uh, in terms of the actual reasons, but we're go, just going beyond that to say we, our focus, whether there's Batoi there to, today or Kronje, or they are gone tomorrow, we must, in the interest of this country, have an NPA that is uh, able to prosecute uh, without fear, without favor, and is able to, 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 to take people to court, unlike what is happening now. Mm. But then surely you cannot be satisfied as a committee, as an oversight body, Mr. Yankee, because the investigative directorate was set up specifically for the reason that you last mentioned, in order to assist the NPA so that it does get on with prosecuting crime in this country without fear or favour. So since that unit has been set up, what have been the gains? How has this assisted the NPA in fulfilling its mandate? Yeah, yes, again, a, a very, very important point. Um, so they, they would have put forward issues of capacity um, and, and, and certain skills. And the fact that they are waiting for a lot of the personnel that will come from the commission, including resources there. But you, you, you would have heard yesterday, we, we said uh, Advocate Cronier had to focus on three areas of her work. Uh, and we were saying we, we, we need a demonstrated uh, time-bound assurance from Advocate Shamila Bato in terms of those three areas that by, by the time she leaves in March, we certainly want to know as a first area, what is the progress that uh, the independent directorate and advocate Cronier has achieved and what is uh, about to, to be delivered in relation to corruption in the security cluster, one. Again, secondly, corruption uh, in the SOEs, whether it's Transnet or ESCO. And thirdly, corruption uh, that pertains to high individuals, whether public or private, uh, that was those are the three areas that the, the independent directorate had to focus on. And, and we said, don't give us names of, 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 of these individuals. Come to us and tell us you are saying you are ready to, 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 to you are poised to, to strike, 
uh, give us progress just on these three areas so that she doesn't, she doesn't just walk away uh, without us knowing what is the progress because if there's got to be a transition, we've got to build from something unless there's an indication that nothing would have happened on, on, on those three fronts, which were her main focus areas. Mm. And, and then on the issue of capacity, to just uh, squeeze that a little further, no high-profile cases that can be reported upon, um, no complex cases, as it were, to be reported upon, but 400 million rand spent on consultants. Let's talk about that. Uh, surely you ought to be worried, the public ought to be worried about that as well. We'll, we'll continue to seek answers to that because we, this, is, this is public money, 400 million and you don't have much to show. We understand the process is there, that sometimes they take long, but our interest as an oversight board is that whatever money we spend, we've got to see an impact on that uh, amount of money. And, and 400 million on consultants, and yet we have not seen uh, anything uh, that, that is tangible, that the society can say, you are an institution in recovery, you are a success in the making, we can see it with this example and, and, and so on. Of course, you understand that court processes have got to be navigated. They are very uh, complex kind of uh, processes that you need to undertake there. But we, we were very clear, not only on the NPA, uh, in the Department of Justice Correctional Services, that um, we want to see value for money spent. Up to now, we have not seen that except being assured of processes, but the outcome and the impact of that is, is not there. And we are going to be very resilient. We're going to be very vigorous because that's our job, to, 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 to get answers to that and then ensure that we, uh, uh, society and, 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 and our population uh, uh, receives value for, for the money that has been spent. Mr. Janke, about the TRC cases and members of the committee um, brought up an important point that in the same vein that uh, the public wants to see corrupt uh, public officials in orange overalls, they also want to see perpetrators of apartheid um, uh, being pursued with the same sort of vigour. Uh, but as Advocate Batoy said, uh, she just came in three years ago. So let's look at the reasons uh, around why these cases are not being investigated and this 27 years after this country attained democracy of course a few years later the trc process but all the same it, it has been decades now and still there's been no movement about 300 files were handed over to the npa um, advocate batoy spoke about the fact that uh, there was political interference previously but Let's talk about why things are not moving right now. And three years is very long, uh, Sakina, um, because if, if in three years nothing would have happened in the TRC, it, it means we should be worried uh, even about other cases that they, would, they might have to take more than three years. On this issue of the TRC, we, we, we express, expressed our, our disappointment. We think that is an indictment. Uh, on the NPA, but not only on the NPA. It's an indictment on us as a country that uh, after so many years, we still have no answers and closures uh, around such a, 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 a critical matter. We would have described it yesterday that uh, we think the NPA, uh, and not only on that, has dropped the ball and, and, and they were caught with their pants down uh, on this issue because the reasons that are forwarded for, for the failure even to meet a deadline uh, that was set uh, are, are unacceptable. You, you had to have a lawyer of the family uh, raising gaps and poking gaps into the case that they would have prepared and, and, and to, for them saying that we're not happy with the level and quality of this kind of investigation. That, that points to what I was raising, this issue of operational efficiency within the NPA. And, 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 and we then said, we are going to want uh, to have uh, Advocate Shamila Batoy come to the committees since yesterday. Every quarter, 
to answer on progress on all of these TRC cases, not just the, the credit of four, because that, 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 that is uh, what has been raised so far. But there are many of those across the length and breadth of this country in, in all of these provinces. You can speak about the, the COSAS uh, uh, for those who are accused of murdering Co Co COSAS leadership and, you, and so many others. So we, we're not happy. Uh, it's an indictment. And, and, and we expressed our, 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 our feelings about that, but we did not just uh, end at that point. We made a commitment that uh, we are going to, uh, every three months, she must come in front of us so that together with her, we walk through the kind of progress that is there or not there and we're able to, to, to because it, it can be explained that after so many years, you only about to begin. Uh, to 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 take the first case uh, in court, and even on that, you found wanting. Mm. So you know, uh, to that point, uh, you have now asked that uh, the uh, NPA appear before you every three months for a progress report, as it were, uh, part of your oversight role. And uh, we do know that Advocate Batoy's um, contract ends in about five years, but. Given what you heard, and, and it was clear that many of the uh, committee members were not satisfied with the answers that were given yesterday, uh, as were South Africans who were looking on. I'm sure many were left still wondering, looking for answers to some of the questions. But these positions are appointments that are made by the president. So in terms of your role as parliamentarians, do you have the right to advise the president on performance, make recommendations in cases uh, such as these, and uh, basically have frank discussions about the fact that perhaps we're not moving fast enough or we're going nowhere slowly, if that be the case? No, we certainly do, Sakina. The, there are matters that we are going to escalate uh, to, to, to the House, the National Assembly, and, and, and in that way, you are able to interact with the leadership of, of the executive through, through, through the president. For example, under the, the, the Department of Justice, we're just not satisfied with the state of that department to a point where we're saying we want the Public Service Commission to come in to assist that department. I mean, you would have known that for two months um, with the cyber attack, uh, maintenance uh, monies were not paid and there were all sorts of other problems there, uh, uh, that were there in, 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 in that regard. So we we certainly going to, going, going to do that, but uh, we hope that it will not get to that point. In fact, yesterday as well, the minister would have been there and he would have indicated that uh, he had struggled to, to, to get a judge uh, to assist in terms of this process. He mentioned uh, Justice uh, Oregon. And, and even that, uh, is, is, is less than an, an acceptable kind of an explanation. We have so many judges in this country. Uh, it, 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 it can't be justified that if you didn't get this one judge and therefore up until this point, nothing would have happened. Again, a, a ball dropped today. Mm. So um, uh, we unfortunately are out of time, so we'll have to leave it there. But no doubt uh, we'll be keeping an eye on this and hopefully we'll speak again in terms of um, follow ups and um, assessment as things move along. But thank you so much for your time this morning, Justice Committee Member Kubudile Yanki, reflecting on the NPA's briefing before the Justice Portfolio Committee in Parliament yesterday. With that, uh, let's take a